there's really no safe like Simply Safe. Over the past couple months, we've been working room to room, renovating and restoring each room throughout my 1929 Spanish Revival duplex that we're turning into a single family home. This right here is what the lobby looked like. The lobby, also known as the lower living room. I had the space painted Dimity by Farrowin Ball and brought in some of the furniture pieces I've been collecting for the space, along with the 17th century tapestry that I could not wait to share with you. I pieced together some random items to create a coffee table and it looks pretty good. And then we hung up the curtains, which just created the biggest impact and visual interest in this space. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. The first thing I gotta say in this video is I'm a little under the weather again. Every time the weather changes, this happens to me and the weather has just been fluctuating so much. So anyways, if I sound a little weird in this video that is why and we are back in the lobby and i love 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 that you guys love the lobby because i love the lobby so much it is such a cool space and if you haven't really seen anything about the lobby or heard about this lovely lobby in my home it's actually the lower living room in my duplex as you know i ended up purchasing a duplex and i'm converting it into a single family home and the lower living room i wanted to turn into like a really great entertaining space i wanted some unique seating areas and i wanted to kind of formatted a little bit differently than a traditional living room per se so that is what we were going for in here and in the last episode we actually ended up bringing in the sofa which you guys have seen the tapestry and I'm not gonna lie there were a ton of controversial comments about the tapestry just in terms of me hanging it in this living room and there being like a large window over here in the direct sunlight affecting the colors on it and with how we ended up hanging it with the velcro and I'll just say that the velcro was actually suggested by the man that I purchased this tapestry from he's had it hung on velcro for I don't know how many years so I just did the same thing but when we ended up lowering it a bit we did actually end up taking those velcro strips and stapling them to the wall so it's a bit more mounted on the wall as opposed to a lot of people saying I was taping it to the wall. I have to also tell you guys that I probably will be moving this at some point. As many of you guys know, I switch around things in my house all the time. I'm putting this in here at the moment so I can enjoy it in this living room. The sun actually never even hits it. There's never direct sunlight on this wall ever. And I'm kind of thinking of maybe moving this to the stairwell in the future. It wasn't my favorite idea when I first got the tapestry because I thought that it felt very expected with the tapestry to put it in the stairwell, but I've come around to the idea a little bit more and I still think we can make it really unique and fun. I mean, it's such a beautiful piece, but I thought I'd enjoy it in here for a while, for a couple of months while it's in this space until I could find something large to maybe replace this with or put something on this wall that fits a bit better. So then we can transfer this over to the stairwell, but I didn't want to leave this folded up for any longer. It's been folded up for four months in my studio room, so wanted to get it up and I love it so much. And we put the rug down in the room, but everything you saw was more so on this half of the room. We still have this entire half of the room, which I have some pretty fun ideas for. I have a few DIY projects as well, so we should get started. I actually want to share with you guys a chair I got over the weekend on Facebook Marketplace. It is so cool. You can see a little sneak peek of the chair right here, and I found this on Facebook Marketplace. When I saw this chair, I sent it to Justin, was like, oh my gosh, look at this club chair. And I ended up DMing, kind of asking if she would go a little lower on the price, and we did. We negotiated a little lower. It is going to be going right over here, and it is a French club chair, and it is the coolest French club chair. The listing said that it was over 100 years old and the lady who owned it said that she had it for over 20 years and it just didn't fit in her new home and I loved it. I ended up actually sending her a photo of it and she was so excited to see it in the space and I love it so much. It's so unique. The arched back really kind of mimics some of the arches in the home. This is such a beautiful chair and so let me see on camera if that's kind of where I wanted to put it. Kind of right there-ish. In this back corner over here, I want to do a tree or just something more organic. And then I have a little side table I want to put right here as well. So let me share it with you guys. But isn't this chair stunning? The chair is pretty large and substantial, but it's nice because we have the tapestry on the right side. So I like how this kind of balances it. If I pull the camera so you could see the actual scale of the chair with the sofa and the coffee table, it looks so, so good. We need some heaviness over here because we have the tapestry 
tapestry over on this right side. I still want to go ahead and try to find something different than this lampshade. I'm not 100% set on this lampshade still, and I wanted to go in and share with you my curtain panels because I had so many questions about these curtain panels when I shared them in the last video. These are from a company called Two Pages, and they are the most stunning, beautiful linen curtains I have ever seen in my life. And if you guys haven't heard of Two Pages before, I actually found out about them through Arvin. I was watching Arvin's videos, and I noticed his curtains were just absolutely stunning, Arvin Alano. And I always loved them, and he ended up linking a company called Two Pages, and I found them through him, and I just love the quality of these curtain panels. They're on Amazon, they're custom made to your window. This one is the taupe gray colorway, but they actually have a little like Rolodex you can order of curtain swatches, which I will link below for you guys because having that on hand is so nice. It's like $25 and it allows you to see every color of curtains. So if you're redoing your house or you wanna order some, but the quality and just overall Everything about these curtains, unreal. And they hung so nicely. They're perfectly like touching the floor. I mean, I did install them. So I mean, I did a pretty good job. I'll say that. But the curtain, I mean, it's unreal. So I'll link these below for you guys. This one's a taupe gray. And yeah, I had them custom made for my window size. They look so good. So as the side table, on the sofa. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite side tables. When I got these, I actually ended up ordering two sets of them and I've just had so many of them. They come in a pair, so you get this larger size and then a smaller size as well. And I love them for everything. They're like iron, they have these little ball feet on them. They're such a cute silhouette. I have a few books that have kind of touches of blue in them to pull back to the coffee table. I have the cutest little lamp that looks like this. I found it at the flea market. It, it kind of has this very arts and crafts style base to it. And then it has this wicker shade that I love. And so I'm gonna put this right on top. So it's gonna be kind of like a smaller lamp for this side table, but I think it's gonna be really cute. The great thing about this living room is it's wired so that any of the lamps that are plugged into the top outlet, when you turn the switch on, it turns them on. So like anything plugged into the top outlet in the entire room turns on with the switch, which is great. Where you up in the blinds pulled down you love it when nobody's around I wanna call out pound town But you bite my lip, don't make a sound I'll be damned if I'm leaving without you mm. down here I wanted to do kind of a collection of items because I'm not gonna lie I do feel like this fireplace is a little less interesting than the one upstairs however I do like the opening of this one like the actual like tile work on this one more the overall fireplace I don't know there's just something about it that I wanted to amp up a bit and I thought adding a ton of these vintage and antique pottery pieces that I've been kind of collecting over like the past year um, just on top here, I also went ahead and headed to Berber Imports in Los Angeles. If you guys have not been there, it's such a cool place. They have so much vintage and antique pottery. If you let them know I sent you, they'll give you a lovely discount. It's actually a great one. And I added a couple more, so I was able to kind of fill in this area. I ended up picking up like six more pots. So I love these, and I also found these candlesticks there too, but I love the shape. I think it adds such a cool bit of height. I was going to use them on a different shelf, but I thought they looked really nice in here. I also went to the flea market yesterday and found a fireplace screen. Jack, change light over here. It's your cross. $30 for this. I found a fireplace screen. This was only $20. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to potentially try it because it's really pretty. It has a barley twist on the edge, which I love, and this little kind of diamond. And then we also got this painting. Lovely. So pretty. I'm not a huge fan of the frame, but I love the painting itself. Pretty. It's XO. We're like, it's time to get out. And I said I have to go this weekend. My daughter lives here. You 
guys are probably so over me buying scary portraits. <laughs> this one's not scary though, he's cute. It kind of looks like you. Does it? And I like how he's just faded into nothing. He's just kind of cool. Yeah. His name's Vincent Welch. Yeah, famous artist. I do like how that looks on there, like yeah. the, whole, the whole composition of this. This one's really great. I need to give it a bit of a cleaning, but look how cute this is, you guys. I found this at the flea market yesterday, and I just love how it fits so perfectly inside. I love the barley twist on the side. That's what this kind of twisted feature is. And then the little diamond or like this kind of motif here. I love it. I think it's so cool with this one. I don't know. I just really like this and I like how it brings a little bit of darkness as well. Plus it hides our lovely tile mishap for the time being. Um, and I can work on that a bit later. I found this set of antique Chinese jars at a flea market like over probably about a year ago when I first got the house and I knew I wanted to use them somewhere in here. There's actually these outlets on either side of the fireplace and I thought some symmetry could be nice in here um, just by incorporating those two vessels to kind of block the outlets just a little bit and I like the way that they look on either side of the fireplace so I think those will live there for now. Over in this corner, I got to use my wooden pedestal that I got from Olive Atelier. I love this pedestal. It is so, so cool and unique, but it's extremely heavy. So I maneuvered that into place. Then the pot on top of this, actually Berber Imports, gave to me as a housewarming gift, which was so sweet of them. And if you could ever find magnolia branches, they dry down so beautifully. This is a dried branch. I've had it for like two or three months now. And believe it or not, these sconces came with the house. Original 1920s sconces that just fit so perfectly in this space as well. I'm putting my HD camera over in this corner on top of the wooden pedestal, and that's because this video is kindly sponsored by Simply Safe. Now, if you guys have never heard of Simply Safe before, you might not have been watching my videos in the past three years because I have been sharing Simply Safe on my channel over the past three years. It is my absolute favorite and go to home security system. I recommend it and share it with absolutely all of my friends, family, and you here on Lone Fox as well. And I've also had the system myself, of course, for the past three years now. To years in my previous apartment and about a year in my new house. I knew when I got this house I wanted to add a security system and I already had the Simply Safe system, which if you've never used Simply Safe, it really is a no-brainer. It is the most sophisticated, cleanest, most modern home security system that is a breeze to set up. They give you absolutely every single door and entry sensor that you possibly need to make sure that your home stays secure whether you are home or away. And I set up the entire system in 45 minutes. I've also set up many other systems in my parents house in my brother's place it is a breeze and for less than a dollar a day with no long-term contracts meaning that you can start and stop whenever you would like to there really is no worry to sign up for simply safe it's actually gonna help you with all of your worries and ensure that your house and you stay protected around the clock through professional monitoring that is powered by fast protect technology exclusively from simply safe so if you would like to save 20% on your system and get your first month for free when you sign up for interactive monitoring make sure to visit simplysafe.com slash loan Fox to customize yours today and try Simply Safe risk free. There really is no safe like Simply Safe. So, this is the opposite corner of where the club chair is. So, that's like diagonal of me. And then right here is the sofa. The tapestry is on the other side of this arch. Oh, and a lot of people were actually commenting and mentioning that I should put the tapestry in between these two beams here. And sadly, it is not wide enough. I mean, it's too wide for that section. Like, this isn't wide enough for the tapestry. It's like three inches too short. And also, if I had it all the way up to the edge, it would actually hang over the arch a little bit because where this beam ends is right like an inch over the arch. I kind of mentioned that one of my main goals down here was to create unique kind of seating areas and that's why I'm calling it the lobby because there's kind of like different areas that you could sit in if you could imagine like a hotel lobby. What I'm going to be adding over here is actually an old DIY project that I love love love. It is this really great 
kind of like fluted walnut table that I created. And I created this for my breakfast nook back in my apartment. And it was such an easy project. They actually sell like the round wood circles already pre-cut. So I got two of those and then I just bought a ton of dowels and I nailed them to the exterior of those circles. And then I glued on top of it a circle tabletop base also from Lowe's. I'll link all the materials if you are interested below for this. And I'll also put a card if you want to see the full tutorial. We're not gonna leave our table just standing right in the middle. We're actually going to pop in these chairs that I have been saving. These are from Badlands Vintage. They are so cool. They have like a flat wood base. So they're not the most comfortable chair in the world, but the nice thing is, is the back actually pivots. So you can kind of like lean back in the chair. But something I found online when I was shopping were these. So cute. Look at these little H&M, if you could believe H&M home. These are little chair cushions. How perfect does that fit? And it makes it more comfortable, I'm not gonna lie. So I wanna add these four chairs at this table. The cushion still. I can't tell if I wanna paint the inside of this built-in. Actually, let me share it with you. This is what it looks like. It's a little off-centered on this wall, as you could see, which doesn't really bother me. But I also feel like I could paint the interior of this and make it like its own moment. But I do have an art piece that I wanna hang on this wall. So maybe I'll bring in the art piece and kind of see uh, what color might work in here. And then I also have some items for on top of this because I'm turning this into a little mini bar section. So when people come over, we can make cocktails here. I'm gonna have lots of extra glassware and just kind of like essentials under there. And then we can wash it all in the lower kitchen, which is really nice. And here is the art piece for the wall. It's an abstract oil painting and it was done in 69. It's actually signed on the back. It says like Alice Silverson. It says self-portrait right here, so maybe, maybe it was painted over? It could have been something else and then painted over the top of. I think the colors are great. Now, it actually was just the canvas when I bought it. It didn't have a frame on it, but I ended up framing this, and I will share with you guys how I frame this, because if you have any sort of canvases that are unframed, this is a great, easy DIY to kind of create a frame for it super quick and easy. It cost me like $10 to make this, and I think these chunky wood frames that are really simple like this highlight the art so nicely, and they look really great, and you could stain them to whatever you'd like. To create this frame, I got two 1x3s and I opted for a red oak just so it was a little bit of a better quality. I'm measuring out the size of my artwork. It is 24 inches by 30 inches and I'm actually going to be clamping my two pieces together. That way I could just cut them at the same time so both cuts are exactly the same. I just freely mitered one side and then I measured the width of my artwork and then I mitered the other side to make sure that it was a perfect size and then I brought the pieces inside and just laid them on either side of the artwork. The great thing about the 1x3s is they are the exact thick of a traditional canvas so it really looks custom and then once you have them all butted up on the edges and all of your four pieces are cut I just used a staple gun and I stapled a long seam of the wood if that makes sense so right along that seam and this is really just to hold them in place because we are going to be going in with the brad nailer just to really secure the entire piece so once you have them kind of held in place and this is creating the base of our frame I'm going in with a couple brad nails and just shooting those down either side of the frame for a good stability. Then I'm bringing the piece outside and I'm just staining it with the exact same color of stain that my upstairs floors were actually stained in. I love this color. It's antique brown by Quick Coat and overall I think this looks really really great. I let this dry and then I just popped it right over the top of the canvas. <laughs> paint because I think I want to paint the built-in.
while the bookshelf is drying down, as you can see, we have a lovely cord mess right here. And this is where the internet is actually installed in the units. And then this part of the internet actually like makes it span farther. So we have a lot of cords and boxes over here, but I had this idea of actually using like a basket and then putting some books inside the basket. A lot of you might remember this basket from a long time ago, like one of my first ever flea market finds, I feel like was this basket. And it's so cute, it's a fisherman basket. And I'm just gonna pop the internet in there. I need a like, taller book to really cover it. And then layer in front. And then I'm gonna add some smaller books over on this side. And then our internet is just gonna be kind of concealed in here inside the basket. And then once this is dried down, I could actually put the uh, mesh system back on the shelf. It is blue, it is dry, and I already went ahead and added just a couple of things I knew I wanted to add towards the bottom here. I wanted the bottom to feel a little heavier than the top section, so I added some extra books. I got this at the flea market this last weekend, and look how cool this is. Marble, carved, art deco situation. One of the largest pieces I have, which hopefully I don't get demonetized for this naked bronze man, but this is the coolest statue. It has a maker's mark on the back of it too, right on the cheek, right there. Do you see that? And I wanna put this piece up here. I have this little artwork that I've had in my last bookcase. I think I'm gonna pop that next to it. And this little taper holder, which is just like this little kind of flower shape, just on the side. And then this taper holder I got when I was back at my parents' house at the thrift store. And I love the curly kind of organic nature of, and then a couple of wooden vases. I thought these would be nice. Just kind of layered. Kind of like that. Also picked up these really cute little mini calla lilies at Trader Joe's this morning and styled them in that vase on the left. Let me add the finishing piece. This is the finishing touch to this area. And it's this candlestick holder that I got from the Crate and Barrel Athena Calderon collection when it first came out because some of the iron pieces I felt like were so Spanishy that I had to pick them up. This has been sitting in that room since the end of last year, so I'm very happy to break it out, added a couple of candles in there, and I love the base. I feel like it just like overlaps the art so nicely. Look at this vibe, you guys. Just over here, making them a cocktail, like, gonna be our stool for sitting but we need to style the coffee table and I want to do some pretty minimal coffee table styling just because the coffee table marble is so beautiful I don't want to cover it up too much but I do have some really pretty tulips and I just put these in water so hopefully they start perking up just a little bit more it's in one of the vintage brass containers from my store I will link them below they're everything I have this taper holder that I love it looks like this. I love the shape of it and the feet on it are just so unique. And I wanna put this on the side. Stole this from the movie theater room because I feel like we just need a little yellow glass on this table. I'm gonna pop that on as well. Okay, also, how did I just do that entire coffee table scene without realizing I haven't shared with you guys this tree yet? I mentioned on Instagram that I was a little under the weather the past couple days, so I was kind of just laying low on my computer, and Justin actually sent me this tree link. It was $50 on Facebook Marketplace, and I love the organic nature of it, so he went and picked it up and brought it back, and it looks like this. We ended up putting it in a pot and just putting it over here in the corner, and I absolutely love just the organic kind of fluidity of it. It overarches and kind of mimics the shape of this window as well, which I love. As you can see, I'm six foot tall myself, and this tree probably is like eight and a half, almost nine feet. Actually ended up toning down the coffee table a bit, just kept it really simple with the flowers, the little bowl, and the candle holder, which I love. And I also forgot to share that I added this bust head that I got this at a garage sale a long, long time ago. I think I did right when I moved into this house. I drove past the yard sale, the lady sold it to me for $40, and I picked it up, and I put it on top of this green pedestal that was actually in the upstairs living room. I need to find another one because 
this one really looks so nice here and I think this adds a nice touch kind of behind the couch because originally we did have the lamp back here but I actually ended up swapping it for this lamp right by the sofa which I love and I got this one as well a lot of pieces in this room are actually from right when I moved in one of the first pieces I purchased for the home was this lamp and it is a bridge lamp and I'm not sure why it's called a bridge lamp but I love the mica shade and I just love the iron work this is an actual antique light and I just love the details all the little intricate hammerings and just a tripod base. It's so cute and I thought it fit perfectly on the side of the sofa and I just wasn't loving the overarching. Something about the pleated shade, it just added too much of these linear lines. Also, you can see them in the curtains, so yeah, I think this one just fits a little better. I think the last thing we have is the pillows on the sofa. I just have three pillows, keeping it really, really simple, but let's add them. We are gonna be adding this anthropology pillow that I had in the old apartment for a long time. I'm just gonna put it right here because I think it kind of channels and brings in the gold color from the tapestry. And look how gorgeous this pillow is. It is the most beautiful pillow I've ever held in my hands. This is actually made from a vintage rug and these are gonna be part of the next vintage drop. We're gonna have an exclusive amount of these vintage rug pillow covers. Like look how beautiful these are. And they're really like not that bad of a price point. I'm not gonna lie. I think there's like 10 of them that we have but I ended up stealing two for this living room, this one here. And then just the longer lumbar shape right here. And this is another one of the vintage rug pillows. They are so just insane quality. This one's so pretty with the blue. Okay, I think everything is in place in this room. And I love this room. I love, love, love it. And I cannot wait to reveal this to you. It is so bright. It's kind of different from some of the other areas in the home, but it still has just the elements that it needs to kind of feel cohesive with the other spaces. And I'm so excited for you guys to see this room because it really, really, I don't know. There's just something about it that is perfect. But let me reveal it to you in three, two, one. And that Lone Fox family is the lobby, all complete. And I absolutely just love this space. And I hope that you like it as well. It definitely is kind of a different layout, a different orientation. Justin, Marie and I have just been working out of this room. It's nice to be able to like eat lunch over here and then work over on the couch on your computer. It just gives you like options for sitting. And also you could seat so many people in here. We could probably have one, two, I'd say this couch can probably fit six, so eight. Probably like 12 to 14 people can comfortably like sit in this room, which is really nice. And yeah, this is the room. I absolutely love it. Before letting you guys go, because this one was a long one, I do want to let you know that over on Lone Fox, we're having a Memorial Day sale and it's a buy more, save more sale. So you can get up to 20% off your entire order and orders over $99 ship for free. So I definitely say check out the site if you haven't in a while. We have a bunch of new arrivals as well. Yeah, so a little sale over there and I will catch you in my next video. I think a couple upcoming videos, guys, we are going to be kind of channeling older Lone Fox videos. I really want to do some Ikea hacks. I'm wanting to do some DIY projects. I've been itching for a good DIY. So let me know in the comment section if that's something you'd like to see, and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye!